I've been flopping, guys. I made a video about Akechi from Persona 5 all the way back in 2020, but somehow I never had the decency to give the real MVP, Toru Udachi, his well-deserved spotlight. Wow, is your brain rotting or something? There's a lot that's already been said about Toru Udachi, and that's for good reason. His villainous character is an excellent subversion of players' expectations surrounding the supposed bumbling detective, while simultaneously providing an excellent thematic foil to Yu Narukami and the overarching philosophy of Persona 4. Great YouTubers have provided interesting perspectives on his psychopathy, relatability, and psychology respectively, and I'll link them below if you can't get enough of this absolute unit. With this video, I want to provide a unique reading on his character that focuses on his belief system and how it drives his character. So let's see what makes the Sigma brain cell tick and ultimately leads to an unassuming guy becoming a cold-blooded killer. At the start of the game, Adachi seems to be nothing more than a lazy detective that sporadically helps you. Oh, by the way, this you, not this one. In his investigation, when he accidentally lets details of the case slip, he comes off as harmless, scatterbrained, and pretty relatable. However, if the player pays enough attention to Adachi throughout the story, they can deduce that he's the true culprit of all the murders going on in Inaba. This is where his character takes a complete 180, and all of his actions and sentiments that he previously held are recontextualized to be more sinister than we'd been led to believe. Adachi killed Yamano and Saki in retaliation for rejecting him. His reaction to Yamano and Saki is a good example of his frustration with his own impotence within society. Once he's rejected by both of them, he ends up using his power to throw people into the TV to exert the only form of power and control that he has in his life over these women. After these incidents, Adachi uses his knowledge of the TV world to manipulate people like Namatame and the investigation team. Adachi says that he did all these horrible things because he was bored, and he could, but it's more likely that he was drawn to abuse and manipulate people because he wanted to exercise some form of control in fulfilling his own sick desires. The primary theme of Persona 4 is facing your true self, where all the characters of the cast face shadows of themselves and come to accept those parts of themselves that they wish to hide from others. To put it less poetically, it's about overcoming cope. Adachi is the king of cope. He constantly makes excuses for his shortcomings in life and is highly critical of others. And when he's caught by the investigation team, he tries to avoid taking accountability for the murders and ultimately ends up pulling a mega cope by externalizing his actions on society. Adachi makes some fair criticisms of society, yet they don't quite apply to his situation. He claims that society only works for people with talent and that people without said given talent are screwed over and left behind. But through learning more about Adachi, it becomes evident that he's had opportunities and has simply avoided them because they were too much work. Adachi likes to claim that society is what drove him to become isolated and underappreciated, leading to his lashing out through the murders. But he has consistently shown himself to make choices that drive himself further into isolation and mediocrity. In Adachi's social link, the player often finds Adachi trying to avoid an old woman around Inaba who wants to spend time with him because he reminds her of her son. He responds to this absent-minded kindness by saying that he doesn't really care for her food and finds her to be more of a burden than anything else, trying to push her away. But it seems that he might also push her away because she reinforces his own feelings of mediocrity and isolation, because he himself is never the object of anyone's attempts to reach out and is only desired by others insofar as he resembles others, or the roles they can serve. It's also revealed that Adachi spent his whole time in school studying to succeed in the world and doing the bare minimum to get by within his studies. He confides in the player that he'd better enjoy school while he can because once it's over, they'll enter the workforce and lose all their free time to slack off. In another part of their social link, Adachi goes to the Dojima household and tries to help Nanako with her homework by telling her to read just a little bit of the book and to write about that to save her any work and effort. This event shows that Adachi made a habit of taking shortcuts in school, and that habit persists to the events of the game, where Adachi is consistently slacking off on the job at Juness. This is completely juxtaposed by the actions Yu takes over the course of the game, where he participates in a plethora of extracurricular activities and forms a bunch of bonds to grow as a person, 
where the player learns to grow in his time at school in Inaba, Adachi would waste time and isolate himself, trying to do as little as he could to get by. Some seem to think that Adachi's motivations to become a serial killer are relatively weak, and if you were to take what Adachi says at face value, it'd be understandable to think that. I did that stuff because I could, and it got interesting, so I watched. What Adachi actually means in regards to his boredom is likely that he felt inept and powerless in society, as I said before, due to his lifestyle and status as a sort of doormat for others. The only thing that made Adachi feel important was his ability to harm and manipulate other people because it was something that he had finally had control over. As the video behind an edgelord points out, a lot of killers in real life harbor similar sentiments to Adachi, whether it be from his initial statements about society's flaws, or his logical extreme of eliminating humanity. The isolation that Adachi forced himself into is unfortunately the most common way for many young men to fall through the cracks of society in the modern day. And his isolation was something that he was definitely active in, but it doesn't help that such isolation is something that forms a positive feedback loop, getting worse and worse as time goes on. Adachi didn't really spend time with anyone in Inaba except for the Dojima household, and he would actively avoid most people that would reach out to him. Adachi also had a job that he felt overqualified for, and was largely unsatisfied with his station in life. His ability to kill people finally gave him a sense of power and purpose in a world that he felt supremely disenfranchised and powerless within. To him, there was really nothing to do but to give in to despair in response to the meaninglessness of his adult life. And that's exactly what he did. While Yu never faces a direct shadow of himself in the game, the narrative of Persona 4 provides a metaphorical shadow in the form of Adachi. Both Yu and Adachi are from somewhat similar backgrounds, coming to Inaba from the city and being forced to adjust. However, it's in the way that Yu and Adachi choose to deal with their situations that makes all the difference in the types of people they are. As aforementioned, throughout the entirety of the game, Yu refines his personal skills and creates bonds with various residents of Inaba both contributing to his power within the Shadow World. Meanwhile, Adachi over the course of the game rejects any opportunities he might have at forming bonds within Inaba, and simply stews within his own resentment. Adachi's selfish resentment is a deeply powerful force that manifests in the form of Magatsu Izanagi, and while his worldview was directly opposed to Yu's, it ended up manifesting a persona of a similar power level. However, in the end, during their final confrontation, Yu defeats Adachi and his resentment using the power of all the bonds he had built up during his time in Inaba, including the bond he made with Adachi himself. Now, it's important to recognize that Adachi was not entirely wrong within the context of the game's narrative for searching for the truth. His warped perception of reality is an authentic response to the finite and isolating realities that underpin the human experience. Believing that because the world only exists as the individual perceives it, no one can truly understand another individual. It's in this radical subjectivism that Adachi chooses to fundamentally reject any reflexive understanding of himself and any acquiescence to the standards or rules of others. While Adachi accepts being turned in for the murders he committed in Inaba, it's not because he believes in justice at the end of the game, but he realizes that holding himself to certain rules and values gives his life structure and purpose. It's with that, Adachi writes to you from prison and wishes him good luck. Adachi's story finishes off in Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, providing an interesting update on his character after the events of Persona 4 proper, when he's brought back into the TV world. Sho Minazuki gives Adachi the chance to help him in his plan to destroy the world, but oddly enough, Adachi has no interest in doing so and is actually working to prevent any people from dying in the TV world for fear of their death causing the case of mysterious murders to be reopened. It might seem odd to think that Adachi is trying to defend his punishment by the hands of the law considering his open abhorrence for society, but it actually makes sense within his newfound mindset after the events of Persona 4. In this situation, Adachi is staying true to his system of values where he lost at his own game, and wishes to play by the same rules to preserve his personal system of meaning and purpose. At the end of the story in Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, the concept of bonds finally reaches Adachi in a moment of pleasant irony, when Dojima comes to visit him in prison, showing that even the most depraved and selfish actions can't entirely destroy meaningful connections. 
Dojima visiting Adachi isn't a moment of forgiveness or redemption, but rather an affirmation of the fact that Adachi did and still has bonds in his own life despite his sociopathic attitude. Adachi is not what anyone would consider a good person, by any stretch of the imagination. He's a misanthropic, cynical man filled with resentment at his own limitations in life and takes it out on others when given a modicum of power by Izanami. Even in 2022, Adachi hits all the right notes for being a compelling villain, just because of how well he represents the frustration of daily life. Adachi's just another reason why Persona 4 is one of the greatest modern JRPGs.